I gave our guys a quote before um, uh, before we started the game. It says, "Strength does not come from winning. Uh, your struggles develop your strengths." And I'm um, really uh, proud of the fact that our guys went out and competed the way they did. I, I told them three things. I just wanted them to compete. I wanted them to fight, and I wanted them to just like play within themselves. And, and I thought they did a really good job of all three of those things. I don't think anybody is is happy um, with the loss. Um, but the fact that our guys tried to follow through on their assignments and with what they are going through at this point in time, um, the fact that they went out there and competed and got past the mental hurdle of that, really proud of that fact of them. And I um, also want to make sure that I give some appreciation to our fans. I thought they did a good job of coming out and supporting an 0 and 18 against an old Miss team that everybody probably thought was going to blow us out. So I thought the fan base gave us some energy, and our guys really needed that at this point in time. What was some of the game plan that, that you had coming into this game? Well, I, I think the biggest thing is trying to contain Moody, and, and that starts with transition defense. And so that means that we had to take care of the basketball. But if Moody gets a look loose in transition, there's no way you can contain him. So that was the first thing. And then the second part of that is just limiting their paint touches. And so that means not letting Moody split us and get into the teeth of the defense, not letting Saez. Um, get the ball on post-up opportunities. And I thought the one thing that we really failed at that we concentrated on is not giving up offensive rebounds. I think that's the best thing that Ole Miss does, and I think that's one of the best things they've always done is because they've always had an elite score like a Moody or a Marshall Henderson that you have to pay so much attention to, and then all of a sudden you're helping, 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 and all of a sudden they're on the glass. So um, I, I thought that's the one thing that we did do a good job of executing on is keeping them off the offensive glass. Okay. Offensively, you know, you had some guys really step up, knock down some shots tonight. What, what was different? Was it, is there anything you can attribute it to, just knocking down shots? Like well, I, I think it's our pace. You know, I thought we were much better as far as, like, our motion offense of not just – I thought we were jogging on our cuts. I thought we were jogging to set screens. I didn't think we were sprinting to set screens and sprinting off cuts. But the other thing was just getting Antonius to understand that, you know, he doesn't have to get all the way to the rim. He's a guy that can make that 10-foot pull-up, that 15-foot pull-up. And I think we, what he does is he tries to get all the way to the rim, and there's three people sitting there looking at him. And so I thought he did a good job of going in there and knowing when to get to the rim and knowing when to get to his pull-up. But I think what it all boiled down to was I thought we had a much better pace of play, which allowed us to be in attack mode much more. Um, as you're going down the stretch, you know, you're kind of hanging with them. They, you know, they get a double-digit lead. You're able to cut it back a little bit. What were you kind of telling your guys? What, what's the message down the stretch there in this one? Well, this big thing was, like, there's no 10-point plays. There's no 8-point plays. You know, just like we tell you, hey, singles, no home runs. We want to be like the Kansas City Royals. Just get on base and move them. Get on base and move them. So, you know, I thought our guys did a pretty good job of that. But, uh, you know, Moody's an elite scorer. He's a guy that I thought sometimes we were contested. I think he hit three threes in a row. I thought two of them were contested. One of them was a really difficult shot, but that's the type of scorer he is. Okay. Um, for your post players to kind of hold um, their, their post to, you know, who's averaging a double-double to eight points tonight, what would you think about their performance inside? Well, I, I got on Trey a little bit about, you know, some of his effort in the first half, and I thought in the second half he came out and gave a tremendous effort. Um, we, we don't want those guys to get the ball. We have to stay on top of them. We want to make them throw lobs, because if you make them throw lobs, we got help built in for them. But when they throw direct feeds in there, we, we can't help. Um, so I thought we did a much better job of, like, taking away their post catches. And so what you have to do is you just got to fight to stay on top. And we're smaller than Ole Miss, and so I thought we did a much better job of staying on top and fighting for those uh, post plays. Obviously with, you know, the three players that, that are no longer with your program at this time, how did the guys kind of handle that coming into this game? Well, I think at this point in time, like with college basketball, it's just something that's pretty commonplace. Um, you know, and it's not so commonplace as far as like the attrition that ends up happening, especially when you have a staff change. So, um, you know, we have some personal conversations, some one-on-one -on -one talks, but you can never get past the fact that those guys have some personal relationships with some of those guys that's no longer here. So we got to make sure that we're like being, uh, showing empathy toward that. And so I thought we had some, uh, nice, some nice discussions about that, some one-on-ones, and I uh, had a chance to hash some things out.